Have you ever felt lost in the sea of information about diabetes? Maybe you or someone you know has been diagnosed, and you're yearning for a clear and concise understanding of this complex condition. In this video, we'll embark on a voyage to navigate the intricate world of type 1 and type 2 diabetes, uncovering their unique characteristics and the profound impact they have on individuals' lives. By the end, you'll be empowered with the knowledge to chart your course towards optimal health and well-being. Number 1 Causes of Diabetes Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease in which the body's own immune system mistakenly identifies and attacks the insulin-producing beta cells in the pancreas. The exact trigger for this autoimmune response remains an area of active research, but it is believed to involve a complex interplay of genetic predisposition and environmental factors. This destruction of beta cells leads to an absolute deficiency of insulin, a hormone essential for regulating blood sugar levels. In contrast, type 2 diabetes primarily stems from insulin resistance, a condition where the body cells become less responsive to the effects of insulin. This resistance means that even though the pancreas may initially produce enough insulin, or even more than usual, the body cannot effectively utilize it to transport glucose from the bloodstream into cells for energy. Several factors contribute to insulin resistance, including obesity, physical inactivity, unhealthy diet, genetics, and certain medications. Number two, symptom differences. While both types of diabetes share some common symptoms, there are also notable differences in how they manifest. In type 1 diabetes, symptoms often appear suddenly and dramatically. This is because the destruction of beta cells leads to a rapid decline in insulin production, causing a significant and immediate impact on blood sugar control. Common symptoms include increased thirst, polydipsia, frequent urination, polyuria, unexplained weight loss, excessive hunger, polyphagia, fatigue, blurred vision, and slow healing sores. In some cases, individuals with type 1 diabetes may also experience nausea, vomiting, or abdominal pain, especially if they develop diabetic ketoacidosis, DK, a serious complication that requires immediate medical attention. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, typically develops gradually, with symptoms often emerging subtly or even going unnoticed for years. This slow onset is because the body initially attempts to compensate for insulin resistance by increasing insulin production. However, over time, the pancreas may struggle to keep up with the demand, and symptoms such as increased thirst, frequent urination, fatigue, blurred vision, and recurrent infections may gradually become apparent. Some individuals with type 2 diabetes may also experience numbness or tingling in their hands or feet, erectile dysfunction, or slow healing sores. Number three, risk factors. The risk factors for type 1 and type 2 diabetes also differ significantly. For type 1 diabetes, family history plays a crucial role. Having a first-degree relative, parent, or sibling with type 1 diabetes increases your risk compared to someone with no family history. Certain genetic markers, such as specific variations in the human leukocyte antigen, HLA genes, have also been associated with an increased risk of type 1 diabetes. Additionally, some research suggests that exposure to certain viral infections may trigger the autoimmune response that leads to type 1 diabetes, although more studies are needed to confirm this link. Type 2 diabetes, in contrast, has a stronger association with lifestyle factors. Being overweight or obese, particularly with excess abdominal fat, is a major risk factor for developing insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Physical inactivity also contributes to insulin resistance. While a diet high in processed foods, sugary drinks, and saturated and unhealthy fats further increases the risk. Family history also plays a role in type 2 diabetes, with having a parent or sibling with the condition increasing your risk. Additionally, age is a significant risk factor as the prevalence of type 2 diabetes increases with age, particularly after 45 years. Certain ethnicities, including African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, and Asian Americans, are also at higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Number four, treatment. The treatment approaches for type 1 and type 2 diabetes differ based on their underlying causes and the individual specific needs. Since type 1 diabetes involves the destruction of insulin producing beta cells, people with this type require insulin therapy to survive and manage their blood sugar levels. Insulin therapy typically involves multiple daily injections of different types of insulin or the use of an insulin pump a small device that delivers insulin continuously throughout the day. 
The type, dosage, and timing of insulin administration are carefully adjusted based on the individual's blood sugar levels, eating habits, and activity levels. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, can often be managed initially with lifestyle modifications, such as weight loss, healthy eating, and regular exercise. These lifestyle changes can improve insulin sensitivity and help regulate blood sugar levels. However, as type 2 diabetes progresses, many individuals may also require oral medications or insulin therapy to achieve optimal blood sugar control. Oral medications work in various ways, such as stimulating insulin production, increasing insulin sensitivity, or slowing down the absorption of glucose from the digestive system. The choice of medication depends on the individual's specific needs and health status. Number five, long-term complications. Both type one and type two diabetes can lead to a range of long-term complications if not well-managed. These complications arise primarily from the damaging effects of chronic hyperglycemia, high blood sugar, on blood vessels and nerves throughout the body. Cardiovascular disease is a major complication of both types of diabetes, increasing the risk of heart attack, stroke, and peripheral artery disease. Nerve damage, neuropathy, can cause numbness, tingling, pain, and loss of sensation in the hands and feet, increasing the risk of injuries and infections. Kidney disease, nephropathy, can lead to kidney failure, requiring dialysis or kidney transplantation. Eye disease, retinopathy, can damage the blood vessels in the retina, potentially leading to vision loss or blindness. Foot problems, such as ulcers and infections, are common in people with diabetes due to nerve damage and poor blood circulation. Dental problems, including gum disease and tooth loss, are also more prevalent in individuals with diabetes. Additionally, diabetes can increase the risk of sexual dysfunction, such as erectile dysfunction in men and vaginal dryness in women. Number six prevalence. Type two diabetes is significantly more prevalent than type one diabetes, accounting for approximately 90 to 95% of all diabetes cases globally. In the United States, it is estimated that over 34 million people have diabetes and the vast majority of them have type two. The prevalence of type two diabetes has been steadily increasing worldwide, largely due to the rising rates of obesity, physical inactivity, and unhealthy diets. Type one diabetes, while less common than type two, still affects millions of people worldwide. It is typically diagnosed in childhood or adolescence, but it can also develop in adulthood. The exact prevalence of type 1 diabetes varies across different populations and regions. Number 7 Diagnostic Criteria The diagnostic criteria for type 1 and type 2 diabetes are similar, but there are some key distinctions. Both types are typically diagnosed based on blood glucose levels, measured through various tests such as fasting blood glucose, random blood glucose, and glycated hemoglobin. A 1C test. However, in type 1 diabetes, there may also be the presence of autoantibodies, which are markers of the autoimmune attack on beta cells. These autoantibodies can help distinguish type 1 diabetes from type 2, especially in individuals who present with atypical symptoms or older at diagnosis. In type 2 diabetes, the diagnosis is often made based on elevated blood glucose levels in the absence of autoantibodies. However, in some cases, Individuals with type 2 diabetes may also have other metabolic abnormalities, such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and central obesity, which together constitute metabolic syndrome. Number 8. Management Strategies While both types of diabetes require ongoing management, the specific strategies may differ based on the individual's needs and the type of diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, the primary focus of management is on insulin therapy as individuals with this type lack the ability to produce insulin on their own. Insulin therapy involves careful monitoring of blood glucose levels, regular insulin injections or the use of an insulin pump, and education on carbohydrate counting and meal planning. Type 2 diabetes management often begins with lifestyle modifications, such as weight loss, healthy eating, and regular exercise. These lifestyle changes can improve insulin sensitivity and help regulate blood sugar levels. However, as type 2 diabetes progresses, many individuals may also require oral medications or insulin therapy to achieve optimal blood sugar control. Regular blood glucose monitoring, medication management, and ongoing education and support are also essential components of type 2 diabetes management. Number 9. Psychological Impact Living with diabetes, regardless of type, can have a significant psychological impact on individuals and their families. The daily burden of managing the condition including blood glucose monitoring, 
medication administration, and dietary restrictions can lead to feelings of stress, anxiety, and depression. Additionally, the fear of long-term complications and the social stigma associated with diabetes can further contribute to emotional distress. It is crucial for individuals with diabetes to have access to psychological support and resources to help them cope with the emotional challenges of the condition. Support groups, counseling, and educational programs can provide valuable tools and strategies for managing stress, building resilience, and improving overall well-being. Number 10, Emerging Therapies. The field of diabetes research is constantly evolving, with new therapies and technologies emerging to improve the lives of people with diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, there's growing interest in immunotherapies that aim to preserve or restore beta cell function, potentially delaying or even preventing the need for insulin therapy. Other promising areas of research include artificial pancreas systems, which combine continuous glucose monitoring with automated insulin delivery and islet cell transplantation, which involves transplanting insulin-producing cells from a donor pancreas. For type 2 diabetes, New medications and drug combinations are being developed to address insulin resistance, promote weight loss, and protect against cardiovascular complications. Additionally, there is increasing emphasis on personalized medicine, tailoring treatment plans to the individual's specific genetic and metabolic profile. Number 11, impact on lifestyle. Both type 1 and type 2 diabetes can significantly impact an individual's lifestyle, requiring adjustments to daily routines and habits. For people with type 1 diabetes, careful meal planning, carbohydrate counting, and regular blood glucose monitoring are essential to manage blood sugar levels and prevent complications. Physical activity also plays a crucial role in maintaining overall health and well-being, but requires careful planning and coordination with insulin therapy to avoid hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. Individuals with type 2 diabetes may also need to make significant lifestyle changes, including adopting a healthy diet increasing physical activity, and achieving and maintaining a healthy weight. These changes can be challenging, but they are crucial for managing blood sugar levels, preventing complications, and improving overall quality of life. Number 12, social support. Social support plays a vital role in the management and well-being of individuals with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Having a strong support system, including family, friends, and healthcare providers can help individuals cope with the emotional and practical challenges of living with diabetes. Sharing experiences with others who understand the condition can reduce feelings of isolation and provide a sense of community. Additionally, support groups and online communities can offer valuable resources, information, and encouragement. Number 13, self-care. Self-care is an essential component of diabetes management, empowering individuals to take an active role in their health and well-being. Self-care encompasses a wide range of activities, including healthy eating, regular exercise, stress management, and adherence to medication regimens. It also involves ongoing education about diabetes, self-monitoring of blood glucose levels, and regular communication with healthcare providers. By prioritizing self-care, individuals with diabetes can improve their physical and mental health, reduce their risk of complications, and live fulfilling lives. Number 14, Longevity. While both type 1 and type 2 diabetes can impact lifespan, the extent and nature of the impact differ. Type 1 diabetes, especially when diagnosed in childhood, can significantly reduce life expectancy. Studies have shown that individuals diagnosed with type 1 diabetes before the age of May 10th have a life expectancy that is 13 to 27 years shorter than those without diabetes. However, advancements in diabetes management, such as insulin pumps and continuous glucose monitors, have helped improve life expectancy for people with type 1 diabetes in recent years. Type 2 diabetes also impacts lifespan, but the reduction is generally less pronounced than in type 1 diabetes. The risk of premature death for people with type 2 diabetes is higher compared to those without diabetes, but the extent varies depending on factors such as age of diagnosis, disease severity, and presence of complications. Studies suggest that type 2 diabetes may reduce life expectancy by approximately 5 to 10 years. The difference in lifespan impact between type 1 and type 2 diabetes can be attributed to several factors, including the age of onset, the duration of exposure to hyperglycemia, and the presence of other health conditions. Type 1 diabetes often develops in childhood or adolescence leading to a longer duration of exposure to high blood sugar levels and an increased risk of developing complications earlier in life. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, 
typically develops in adulthood, often after years of insulin resistance and gradual beta cell dysfunction. Understanding the differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes is essential for effective self-management and informed decision-making about your health. By recognizing the distinct causes, symptoms, risk factors, treatment options, potential complications, the latest advancements in diabetes management, and the psychological and social impact of living with this condition, you can take proactive steps to prevent or delay the onset of complications and live a full and healthy life. Remember, diabetes is a complex condition, but with proper care, attention, a collaborative approach with your healthcare team, a commitment to ongoing learning and self-care, and a strong support system, you can successfully navigate its challenges and achieve optimal well-being. And please subscribe to this channel if you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching.